Hey everybody, this is Fran Frischella, draft expert and basketball junkie. To everybody who's watching, let's get our friends at General Manager Games the subscribers they deserve. Just press that red subscriber button and immerse yourself in sports AI through GM Games content. And on Twitter, it's GM underscore games. Let's get after it. Let's go. It's college basketball 2021. And uh, we're getting some more Missouri Tigers. We're into season five. Uh, this so this should be our seventh stream uh, on the the 2021 version of the game. Uh, so you, you guys are gonna have to remind me when the game came out. I'm trying to stick to at least one a week, uh, hopefully more. But that's where we are as of now. Let me get the the old device rolling over here as Chris, I'm sure, is getting the word out. Getting the tweets. Uh, I want to make sure I've got my chat right. And it was right a second ago. And then it went away. Here we go. So we're back with the Missouri Tigers. Uh, we can take a look here. Let's, let's clear out the inbox real quick. Uh, oh, okay. So this was transfers from last time. And our pro draft. And I don't remember if we followed our pro draft or not. So let's jump over and check that out just real quick. Still shouldn't be too much... Uh, in the way of recruits from our schools. We do have one of my Louisville boys going up here nice and high, number three. Another one at number 11, Wayne Wright. Ooh, Louisville filling the draft up for the top 20. <laughs> Five of the top 21. Jeez. All right, let's see. I'm sure there's no Missouri in here. Uh, I'm going to guess there's no Bellarmine in here. So that's... What's up, Chris? Glad to have you in chat, buddy. Uh, so that ends the possibility of any of our Bellarmine guys going pro. Figured it was a long shot, but you never know. They, they could have gone late. I think they got some pro potential. Check that uh, check that G League out. You'll probably see our boys from Bellarmine over there here real soon. But uh, let's clear those emails. Take a quick look back over our roster. See what we got set up because this is the year, guys. This is the year we make the leap. You know, last year, we had a good regular season and then kind of uh, flunked out of the tournaments. Uh, this year, we're, we're going to flip that around a little bit. Hopefully, we still have a good regular season, but the tournaments, we're going to make we're gonna make runs this year. Uh, we've added depth. Uh, all of our players are another, another year along. We've still got Flanagan and O's leading the way. Uh, Wendland, a sophomore now, Mangum a junior. Tremaine Allen somehow never transferred out. This guy has strongly disliked me since day one at Missouri. Uh, he's still around. Uh, we've added some freshmen like Frank Wilcox. Quite the star rating here. Uh, his scoring and defense are less than impressive to me. So uh, he's got some growing to do, but uh, I think he'll come around. Very athletic player. So good rebounder for a guard. Uh, good shooter, good passer. He'll, he'll get there. Uh, and these are the kind of guys we're going to be bringing in here. You know, they're, they're going to have... Um, they're going to have their strong points and their weak points because we're still building this into something uh, something big. Great to be back. Yeah, great having, uh, great having the stream back up and running. Uh, but yeah, you bring in these guys and, and you just start growing. So this is definitely the year we take the leap. Uh, you can see here, we're going to start off at 61 prestige. I think we can at least get to 65 just with this season. Uh, if not significantly higher. If we don't hit at least 65, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. Uh, unless, you know, there could always be injuries or something outstanding that, that throws me off. But let's get out here. Make sure I don't have a call watch list set up. I do not whatsoever. So, full recruit list. we got four scholarships open. Uh, my guess is we're going to do the same thing we do every single time and just add 10 guys at each position, give or take, you know, depending on availability. Let's see. Mangum is a little bit upset. Uh, but he'll be all right. Brian Davis, a sophomore. This is definitely a guy we want around. Uh, he can definitely score. So he's just not getting along that well with teammates. That's all right. Tremaine Allen always hates us. He's a senior. Big deal. Kellum. Ooh, hopefully the team thing comes around. O's is a senior. He'll be fine. Wendland, we need to make sure he's happy. He doesn't like the team either. So, again, you also, when you are in this range of recruits for whatever reason... Like the, the top tier elite talent, usually you can do pretty good attitude wise. This like second tier talent, they always got attitude issues. I don't know why. 
But you can see we got some issues there. Uh, we definitely got solid inside players in O's and Winland. We've got young guys. We've got everything coming together here. This is the year we make the leap. And then uh, recruiting-wise, we just got to continue to bring it in, continue to bring talent through the door. So that's exactly what we're going to set out to do here. Uh, Scholarship-wise, we'll lose Flanagan, Allen, O's, and who's our fourth? Is it only three seniors? Flanagan, Allen, O's. All right, so only three seniors, but we got four scholarships. So either we didn't get one <laughs> looking for internationals. Uh, we can certainly do that. Uh, I don't have a great feel for internationals and, and how to evaluate that talent, though. Uh, so I don't know where the extra scholarship's coming from. Either someone transferred out, uh, which, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That small forward that we had, uh, who we essentially benched last year, he transferred out. But anyway, we're just going to fill it up with talent here and, and see what comes of it. And, you know, that's definitely, I, I start going to internationals once, like, my local guys aren't panning out. Like, the point guards here look a little bit thin. So, yeah, we can always check that out. Of course, I don't have any reports. So, if I had more money to buy those reports, that would certainly help, especially with as important as the Gold Star reports are in this year's version. So these top guys have no interest, but they're in region. Their GPAs don't scare me whatsoever. So we're going to bring them in and just see if we can't get a good visit off. There's a non-qualifier. There's a Juco we don't need. All right. So we filled out point guards on three-star guys. What's up, Breeze? Glad to have you, buddy. Yeah, transfers. Uh, could certainly look at that as well. Could certainly look at that. So 3.7, he doesn't scare me off either. We'll give it a go. You never know. I mean, we're 61. We're probably not getting any of these, but you could always have a lucky visit, right? All right, so anybody with interest, not worried about them qualifying at all. And we're filled out there. So, yeah, once I, if I can get a little bit of wiggle room there on the budget and start going after some of these other uh, internationals, JUCOs, transfers, that sort of thing, Certainly something that I uh, will start seeing if we can get something done there. Just scanning. There's a lot of three-star guys here at Small Forward. Just seeing if any of them were in Missouri. I haven't actually seen if any of these guys were in Missouri. I'm going to add these last two just because they're three-star guys. Uh, and see if we need to cut them loose for some better talent over here. So be it. We can always do that. And this guy has no interest as a three-star guy in region with a 4.0. Oh, we're going to add you anyway. Just see what happens. We're shaking it up. There's a non-qualifier. Non-qualifier. Uh, so we do still have a, a handful of talent there at the power forward. I, I think we've got some young guys at power forward, though. Yeah, we'll definitely see if we can find um, find some guys to go go big on eventually. I just need to plan it out a little bit. Two, three. All right, so we're definitely light here at center. So yeah, let's just take a look here at the international region. See what center's got to got to offer. Nothing <laughs> at all. Let's see what all. Let's see what all the who's the best international player. They're all four stars, so nothing crazy internationally. Uh, let's throw a couple of them on our list, though, just to spice things up. I like the stats there and here, to be honest. Uh, and, and the point guard's not half bad. So let's throw those three guys on the list just to see if uh, if if Chris can... Chris gives us the audible, or he, you know, he calls in the play from the dugout, however they do that. And I'm like, all right, I see what you're picking up. So we're going to throw some internationals on this list, see, see what we can do with it. That gets us up to 48 on our list. I feel pretty good about that number. I think we got a decent list set up. And let's go ahead. We can come back to all regions because this is our call watch list. And we got, so $24,000 in budget. That's 
tighter than I would like to have. We do need to be uh, careful about that. We can't just blow through this budget. So that's another thing we're going to have to be very careful with. We can maybe call the internationals, but I... You know what? Just to be safe so I don't screw it up, maybe I should hide those guys somehow. Uh, we can just look at Great Plains region, maybe. Just so those are going to have to be guys... Yeah, I definitely want to mix it up and, and do some interesting stuff. Yeah, it is. The internationals cost a lot, and that's what scares me with this tiny budget. Uh, so those guys will be like, you know, break glass in case of emergency. Uh, I do want to at least make a run at some of these top guys, but we're going to chop our list down quick so we don't waste too much, and we're going to be very uh, stingy on the visits for sure. But. Well, let's go ahead and get some of them going here and just see if we can generate any interest out of this first week. See what kind of feedback we get. Still need to jump over and take a look, see if my coach has got any kind of decent progression. Because that's off, also obviously going to have a big effect on... Um, Kind of a big effect on how this goes and look at this right off the bat two of these five star guys they thought it was all right this guy didn't care for it so we can bounce him right off of that list but we got a we got a little bit of interest for some really talented players daryl thompson says the strings have been helpful getting you rolling with dayton man i always wanted to get a save going with dayton love the flyers been up to that arena quite a few times for some tournament games looking at a final four run nice Ooh, good luck with the flyers hey i it's a uh, I've considered taking, if you're watching the stream, surely you know about the CBGM. Uh, I'm thinking about taking some more teams over there, and Dayton definitely crossed my mind. Uh, I wanted to get a little bit further away from Kentucky, but I think Dayton's a really cool school. Uh, the really cool arena, the big, like, whoo. Uh, it's hard to explain how that arena looks if you haven't seen it. It's like that ride at Kings Island, that, like that boat that did like that. That's what the roof is shaped like, the arc on that boat. And the whole arena just sits down below it. Oh, the roof's like a big U, so but like a real elongated one. So, good luck, and uh, appreciate the kind words. So, we can take a look at this feedback, but really we want to see the camps. Cool visit, appreciate it. Keith didn't care for it. All right, so Ress and Gray are some pretty nice prospects. All right, so here go national camps. And... We got a handful of recruits at this one. So of course, Randolph, the one that told us to take a hike, he's actually in the top five in the nation. So, interesting to see. Let's see how these other ones... So, decent, not spectacular. You know, that's still all right, though. Especially in this ranking, he's right around that cutoff where, like, maybe he stays around for a few years. And it says he's a hardworking kid. So while he might come in with a little bit low initial rating for a guy that, you know, shows up as a five-star, you know, his, his initial rating might be a little bit low. He might show up as a two, two-and-a-half-star guy. But he's going to have a high ceiling, and he's a hard worker, so he's going to reach that ceiling. Uh, definitely a guy that we want to take a look at. So let's check out Gray. Uh, now, a little bit different here. He had the same kind of performance, uh, but they're, they're saying he, he could work a little bit harder. He might not reach that potential. And he's also higher rated, so you know, the likelihood of him leaving early just increases. But uh, it would still be a, a useful player for us. Ooh, VCU getting hit with probation. <laughs> All right. J.R. Hardy, any interest? Nah. Nothing. Absolutely zero interest. Pretty highly rated player, uh, but we're not bringing him in with our 61 prestige. And we, Let's go ahead and take a look real quick at what our coach recruiting rating is for now. We're at 72, so we're definitely pushing it. We're getting up there to the elite levels in college. Um, as, like I said, as that increases, it's going to have more and more and more effect, but uh, we'll get there eventually. We've, actually, we've got another... Let's host first. What we got? No, hold on. This should be the Great Plains camp, right? Let's see how this went. What's up, Beach Bear? Glad to have you in chat, buddy. Oh, no, that was Vegas. All right. So we're not worried about Vegas. We need to go grab a couple of these guys uh, for some more hosting. 
So you, I mean, you can already see we had 24. That was about $1,700 to bring those three guys in. So this can go quickly. We are not on a deep budget here. Uh, 30 to 35 is a little bit safer. Uh, 50 to 60 is ideal to just do whatever you want with. But you know, let's see how it goes. Let's also give at least Ress a call. We can call both these guys. All right, 25%. So he actually answered every question we asked. Love to see it. Uh, can we? No. <laughs> no such luck with Todd Gray. Hangs up on us immediately. Uh, that's my sign. Move on to the next phase of recruiting. Get through this Great Plains camp. See what we're truly working with. Start whittling down this list straight away because we don't even want to host players uh, if they don't have, uh, you know, if they look like trash in camp. All right, so got through our camps there. Looks like all these guys had decent visits. Nothing popped up hot or anything, but um, you know nobody told us they weren't interested at all. So let's check this out in Houston. Here are our top performers. Ress again showing up as a top performer. Tommy Smith, the center, no interest. This is going to be a non-qualifier. Uh, good player, but not going to qualify. So here we go. Antonio Washington, four-star guy, top 25 at Indy, top five at Houston. These are the kind of guys to die for. Like top 25, top 10 guys at Indy, four-star guys who won't necessarily bolt after their freshman year. Like I love, love recruits like this. So we're hosting, we're scouting, we're texting. Anything we can do to get our hands on Antonio Washington, he's 1,000% our top target right now. All right, so let's stop texting. Let's see what that list looks like, actually. So he's it's one of these guys with weird schools on his list. Only a 2.2 GPA, but once again, I'm not scared. Until somebody shows interest right off the bat and then doesn't qualify... I'm, I'm holding tight to my theory that he's going to qualify. So this right here is the man. I'm going after him hard. And if he comes in, I mean, that's an absolute star. We're already on rest. Let's check out Harrington. He's into it. He was decent at Indy. Top five at Houston. Uh, we've already hosted him. Must have been all right because he's still got interest in us. So we, we can scout live again. I don't want to use the scout live to generate too much interest just because it's costly. Top five at Houston. No information on the other camps, but again, should be a solid guy. Let's get some stuff unlocked. Ah, hanging up on us right away. What about Harrington? You want to talk? You want to chat? Anything? Discipline? Playing time? Playing time? Yep. Oh, we're out of time. All right, so we recruited that entire week from the, the Houston recap there. So this should be a dead period. Uh, we, did we only get one visit in there? Oh, look at that, Antonio Washington. Okay, so I clicked on the other two recruits, and their host option was grayed out, so I forgot I still had two offers, uh, two more on-campus hostings available to me, so I missed out on it, only did the one, but... Look who it is. It's our top target, Antonio Washington, and he came back saying he had an awesome visit. Let's go to the screen. Let's see if he's warm. Come on. Oh, he's warm. He's not hot yet, but he's warm. Please tell me this isn't fool's gold. If this guy craps out on me, if he's the one that ruins the streak on my theory, I'm going to cry on stream. Real tears and everything. I mean, he's top 25 at Indy, top 5 at Houston. Not a leader, doesn't cause problems, comfortable shooting out the three. I mean, there's a scholarship right there. Done. Easy, easy decision. All right, let's 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 shave these lists down a little bit so we're not inviting anybody in that we don't care for. Didn't stand out at Houston. That's a no-go.
Didn't stand out at Houston. Didn't stand out at Indy. All right, not great, but let's see what we've got. Hard-working kid, okay. Sometimes you got to take those guys. So we get this list down, and then we can just roll through, and anybody that's left on the list, first of all, we won't waste, and not that it's a lot of money, but we won't waste any money whatsoever on uh, calling people that we don't have any interest in. And this is a great thing. I love recruiting off of this screen now uh, because so much of the information has changed. This is still, to me, one of my favorite, uh, one of my very favorite improvements in this year's version of the game. There's a top 25 looking good. Catch you later there. Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp. How's he? Uh, he's got to be a baller, right? Surely Shannon Sharp's solid at basketball. Maybe not the fake Shannon Sharp, but I'll take the real one for sure. All right, so I don't know where all the talent is at this Houston. Uh, at this, I mean, There's got to be 25 guys that were top 25, right? Are they like all... All of the guys that aren't going to qualify? Is that what we got going on here? Uh, so he didn't even go to Houston, but he was good at, good enough at Indy. He's a five-star guy. J.D. Harrington, definitely solid. Let's see if we can unlock the rest of his information. But again, this is a small forward. We're already, we're already locked into a small forward. Right there. Our man, Antonio Washington. A big, call him A-Wash. Get rid of Rico. Get rid of Even? Ivan? Mr. Sanders. Uh, the door is that way. Ronnie Arnold. You can follow Mr. Sanders. Gareth Jack. Didn't do well. So that was a last second avoiding of the pun there. It was coming right at me and then I bailed on it. Alright, so here we go. Another top 10 guy, Tom Farmer. So, again, solid player. Definitely some interest here. But at a position that we're already... Uh, we've already got a target. And Hoyer is out of here. On to the power forwards. And once this is done, we're going to fly through this offseason. Crosby, you're out of here. We go on Davis, top 25. We definitely want to try to prioritize these guys that were top 25s. Top 10s, also Lou Morris, looking good. If I could just bring in a bunch of guys that were all like top 10 at the regional camp, man, life would be good. Sandin, you're gone. Metcalf, you're gone. Maxwell, another top 10 player. So we got a couple of top 10 players here on the inside at power forward. And now let's check out only a few centers available to us. Let's see. Top 25, so Maben is a good one. Blake, not so much. Fletcher looking good. O'Neal looking good. And Benton, all right. So we actually got once this list updates... Uh, when you drop from that screen, you got to move off and then come back here. Uh, so we got a handful of top 25s here and then the one decent player. So even though the centers were, it was a relatively shallow pool, but I mean, we're going to end up numbers wise, you know, I mean, here's your top performers. We ended up with about five at each position, uh, a lot of talent at shooting guard and everything else is about five guys. So we're ready to go now. we still got 17,000, so I'm definitely going to back off of the live scouting. Five-star would change the program. Not, not so much as one of these guys that were top 10 at camp, actually. Like If I had my... Look at that. Antonio Washington up to hot. Love to see that. So, would Todd Gray be great? Well, he was decent at Indy, and he didn't go to a regional camp. Odds are he's a one-and-done player who, without... I mean, if he's not one of the top 25 players in the nation, he could be good, but he's not coming in. When he gets here, he will not be rated a five-star. 
Um, you know, he'll be rated like a three star or something with five star potential. And then he's gone after a year. So how impactful is that? Antonio Washington is a four star guy, was in the top 25 at Indy. So already right off the bat, he's more developed than Gray. He was at the top five at Houston. And he's a four star guy rated in the 50s in the nation. He's very, very unlikely to go pro early. So we're getting essentially a guy that outperformed Gray at camps. And we're getting him for four years instead of one. Uh, Antonio Washington, a player like this, changes the program far more than a guy like Todd Gray, in my opinion. Assuming that he qualifies, because that's not a guarantee right now. <laughs> Maybe he knows Robert Morris, the guy that beat Kentucky. Oh, man, I still remember after the game when Robert Morris beat Kentucky, and that's got to be 10 years ago now. I had a buddy that's a big Kentucky fan. I was like, hey, man, would you check out my buddy's resume? He's uh, He's... Real talented guy needs a job. <laughs> I sent him the Robert Morris, like, RPI, record, wins on the road, all that stuff. Uh, I had fun with it. He wasn't as, he didn't think it was as funny as I did. But uh, anyway, let's bounce over here. We had a couple of top ten guys. Was it Morris? Was one of them, right? Top ten player at Houston, yes. Top ten at Houston. So Maxwell is also solid. Davis is top 25. Back to Morris. Uh, let's... Oops. Decent. No. Decent. Decent. Top 25. All right, we'll host him. And let's see. Do we have all of this unlocked yet? Well, let's unlock the information. Let's unlock it for him as well. All right, all good. All right, keeping an eye on the budget. Guys, in chat, please do not let me forget about the budget. So see, we're using like 15, 1700 a week still. It's, it's iffy. Got to run these last two camps before we get any of the results. All right, now we'll get those campus visits. And see, the, the problem is I'd like to have about $12,000 going into the in-homes. And we're already about at that limit. So, man, if I could find, you know, if any of these guys had said awesome visit, I would have probably popped that offer out right on the spot. And Lon Davis is actually up to warm. Uh, so he was only top 25. He might be one of the lower guys. Uh, he might He might have had the worst performance out of the three power forwards that we're looking at. But he's got the most interest straight away. So, and we're in his top 10. Let's, let's check out, I'm going to say we're going to do two more full rounds of on-campus visits. Ooh, that's a nice cheap one, 125 bucks. So always nice when they're in uh, in state, right? That's what I ought to be using all that live scouting on when it's available. Is these in state guys? Let's back over and make sure that we've got uh, Lon Davis. We need to get categories unlocked. Talk to me, my man. Talk to me. There's got to be something you want to talk about. I'll keep texting. God, hung up on me. All right. Carson with the 4.0 GPA, does he? Jason Carson, 4.0. Looking solid, my man. <laughs> Hitting those books. That's what we need at Missouri. Guys, I don't know how long I go tonight. Uh, you know I like to get you through at least one full season when I can. Uh, I've been gone for a while, feeling pretty pumped. A couple of the kids are at my parents. It might go long, you never know. Might go short, never know. I guess chaos could erupt upstairs with only one kid home, but uh, I'm hoping that it doesn't. See how this went. Cool. Didn't think it was worthwhile from Fletcher. Appreciated it. Eh. A Sean Bradley. Oh, what's he? If you're gonna name a guy Sean Bradley, he's got to be a big man. Come on now, Kentucky. What are you doing? Uh, Kentucky and Connecticut certainly look loaded here, according to the Norton list. And Missouri still doesn't have anybody uh, showing up on that list. Let's take one more quick look at what we're losing. Two guards. We'll still have Mangum. I'd really like a point guard. A 
Okay, I, I definitely need a point guard. Sophomore freshman. Yeah. Small forward, power forward, and center. So basically, I need everything but a shooting guard. All right. So now we know what we're targeting, uh, what we want to hit hard. So we got a little bit of interest here. Let's go ahead and throw that scholarship offer down. Let's dial up Mr. Davis. God, come on, man. you got to quit hanging up on me. You're killing me, Juan. You're killing me. Let's text him. Maybe he likes texting. You know, these kids these days, right? Uh, there we go. There we go. Loves talking about playing close to home. Let's chat it up. All right, he's thinking about me. We're on his list. Well, you got an offer, big man. You've got yourself an offer. Check out these centers. So we got visits out of all of them, and it didn't do much for us. So let's just keep an eye on it. Uh, we s let's go find our point guard. We want to offer a point guard. All right, so Brian Bradley, by far, the best option at point guard. Uh, I don't know how much interest he's going to have in us because he's getting he's getting big on Iowa, Kansas, Notre Dame's uh, up here. I don't know that we're going to be able to convince him to come in. So we need to go ahead and and. Bring some more guys in. Although that's only 125, 500, so it's six, 700. Another in-state guy. So we got a couple of cheap in-state guys here in Hurd and JoJo Brown. That might help us out, actually. See how those visits go. Barber one star. Uh, no, he, he's got good potential. And, you know, I, for the most part, I only recruit guys that, that played well and that I know are going to end up doing well. So I don't mind when they come in and only have one star to start off. Uh, he'll come around. So we're number one on JoJo Brown's list. So this is a guy that's decent. Uh, I mean, we need a point guard. We probably have to come in and recruit behind him next year. But for now, for depth, I think this is where we go. Uh, it's certainly, you know, bringing in a warm body. We gotta like that. So we've got that offer. We've got Antonio Washington. We've got Lon Davis. Now let's go grab our center. Uh, let's bring in Brian Benton, who's another in-state guy. Let's host him. Pop over to the next week. See how that visit goes, and then we make our decision at center. All right, here we come, and we're getting close. You know. We're already late August. After this sim, it's going to update these top 10 lists and show us what's what. So, still cool over here. But we're in his top 10. Fletcher, not so much. It, he actually has no interest. So, we need to get him off of the list. O'Neal, we're on the list. He's very high in Colorado State. Maybe we're not on the list. So either Benton or maybe O'Neal. Something tells me we've got the better shot at Benton. So that's what we're going to roll with. We're offering Benton. Let's call him up, make sure we've got all of our categories unlocked for any player that we've offered a scholarship to so that we're making them the best pitch when we get to end homes. And after that, we're skipping right to it. Lon Davis, location. My man. Love a good location recruit. Washington, location. That's where it's at. Location, location. Man, Kansas is big on that guy as well. It's a little bit scary. JoJo Brown, we need to unlock categories. And he doesn't want to talk. Come on now. Dial, dial him up. All right. Whew. Let's let's check in on the shooting guards just in case. So you can see here, I mean, he he gave us the time of day. Uh, no, not rest. It was the the other guy that gave us the time of day. But like nothing, nothing really popped out. 
where any of these guys, Pat, I'm looking at in-state guys we could get a cheap visit out of if they were if they did really well at any of the camps, but these two did not. They were all right. Seeing as how we can host them for 125 bucks, there's really no reason not to. But these others, like 750 a pop. Yeah, thanks, but no thanks. All right, so let's sim through a couple more weeks and see what we can do with these in-home uh, in-home visits. See if we can get these guys committed, and then we'll get rolling with this season. Look at that. Popped off all kinds of big interest over here out of Burleston. And that's a guy who was decent. So, again, uh, not somebody I'm crazy about, uh, but he seems to be crazy about us. So it's a very good option if we need to fall back on it. The thing is, we're pretty loaded at shooting guard right now. So our offers are out. I don't have any reason to slow down through here. We're, we still got $11,000, which is about where I like to be budget-wise. So I feel good. Once we get to end homes, we can do whatever we like. We can change our strategy however we like. And that's just enough money if we do happen to strike out. You know, we can limp along through in-season recruiting if we choose to do that. Um, but either way, we can run through our budget and ask for a budget increase at the end of the year. So we're actually very well situated here budget-wise. This is exactly where I'd like to be at this time. All right, so let's get it. See if anybody commits without letting us in the door. I don't think that'll be the case, although I do I do worry about my man Awash. No, no, no. He, they're all going to let us talk. Whew. You can't let me in the door, baby. You can't let me in the door. I'm up to seven, 75, 77 recruiting. What was it? Can't let me come in the door. A&M, Nebraska, Creighton. Y'all messed up. He's a home he's a home state guy. He loves location. What do you think, Awash? Oh, hot on a lot of schools. He's out of Colorado, but he loves the location as well. So that's what we're going to give him. And uh, just hope we give it to him better than anybody else does. Davis, we're up there on his list. He's another location guy, as they pretty much all are at this point. And the last one is Benton. He's actually moved up to warm on us. So I told you guys uh, I thought we had a better shot at him than most. Uh, I thought we had a better shot at Benton than these other two. And, uh, you know, it appears that that was a pretty good guess. So there's our four offers. There's our four in-home visits. Let's see if we can get four commits right here. Knock it out of the gate and move on into the into the games. Because this is the season. I already told you right off the bat. I told you last week. I told you again when we started this one up. Uh, this is the stepping stone season. We're, we're launching right here this season. So stick with me because it's going to be real excited. These guys, they like it. They like it. Nobody telling us to go away. Nobody committed yet, but that's actually a good thing because look, they're all going to pop up. Hot interest. We're going to move to the top of these lists. Here we are with Benton. Pitch location again. Here we are with Davis at the top. Pitch location again. Let's see what my man Awash. Oh, we didn't jump to the top of his the way I would like to see it. So that's making me very, very nervous. He's getting a lot of attention from a lot of schools. And right now there's a few schools, there's a few schools still beating us out. So we need to cross our fingers big time here. Now, the good thing for us is Farmer is another outstanding prospect. The bad news, there's a lot of other schools up here on him as well. So what we do need is to go ahead and host him. I'll throw out the money for that. And now let's go over here to our point guard, right to the top of the list, pitch and location. So we move to the list, at the top of the list on three out of four of these guys. Of course, the only one that we're super pumped about is the one that we're still uh, sort of up in the air as to how it's going to go. So nothing to do but cross your fingers, you know, give it a roll the dice, see what happens. Hmm. All right, so the good news is we don't have any available scholarships. The bad news is here on the point guard screen, we can see JoJo Brown still not committing. We're down to $6,000, so we definitely need to keep an eye on it. There's the good news. Oh, 
No scholarships available. That means all three of these decisions. Brian Benton coming to Missouri. Lon Davis coming to Missouri. And Antonio Awash Washington coming to Missouri. Look at my boy Antonio Washington. My, oh my, this is this is a program-changing type of recruit right here. Hard-working kid. Top five at Houston. Top 25 at Indy Elite. This guy is a star. Every school in the region wanted him. Every school across the country should have been in on him. But he's going to be a Tiger. So this is a massive, massive recruit for us. He's one of the best top 25 players in the country. And, and he's going to stick around and develop instead of being a one and done, which to me adds even more value. So that is a massive pickup. We landed all th three of the guys that actually committed. Now, Benton was one of these guys, decent, not spectacular. That's all right. That's a that's a type of guy that's going to develop. Uh, just like Beach Bear was talking about Barber only being one star. You know, at this point, when we're still at 60 prestige, we still got to let some guys develop into the type of players that we want long term. Uh, but we're, we're bringing in guys that we know will develop. You know, they're going to have that potential. Uh, Juan Davis is uh, another one that was top 25 at Houston. So we just need to get over here. Uh, get out on JoJo Brown. I don't know why he's not commit. Ooh, we dropped down. So Texas A&M and Nebraska both shot up ahead of us. All right, well, we're staying on the location. We'll see what happens here. I wonder, so Tom Farmer is still available. I mean, we, we make a play at him, right? <laughs> We could throw him over at shooting guard or power forward or whatever. Like, there's no reason. What's our budget? Yeah, we can spend another $700 here. Uh, and we're, we're going to go talk to him about the location. What else will we talk about? If we can end up with another scholarship and bring him in too, my, oh, my, that would be a ridiculous haul. And we would be chock full of wing players. But you know what? Uh, we can make that work. Well, we can run uh, shooting guards at the point and small forwards at the power forward. And we can, if you're rolling talent out there on the floor, you really, really can't go wrong, guys. Ah, but Farmer did go to Colorado State. So, heck of a get there for Colorado State. And still no decision from JoJo Brown. Very interesting. He's letting this really play out, isn't he? All right, so we're still in the mix here. It actually looks like facilities a little bit higher up on his list. The parents are interested in location, but they don't have a ton to say about it. He's indicating he's more into facilities now. Let's give him a little bit on facilities, see what he has to say. We also need to be seeing if we've got a backup out here, uh, a backup option. Patrick Hurd is certainly a good option. Hmm. Close enough. All right, let's see what we get here. Make a play for Farmer. Yeah, uh, I totally wanted to. We, we tried to make a little bit of noise with him, but yeah, it is what it is. If we land JoJo here, we land all four of our top prospects. Here's the decision. He's going to A&M. So we're still in need of a point guard. So it did not work out the way we wanted it. But we do still have Patrick Hurd. That's why That's why we have backup plans, folks. So we shoot out the scholarship offer to Hurd. We are now second on his list. So ideally, you know, the, the local guy comes through here. So we'll see. We're still in the mix. Shooting guards. We still got a couple of shooting guards here. Rosser. Decent at Houston. Burleson was he also decent at Houston. So, you know, we got other options at shooting guard. We really need a point guard because <clears throat> we're we're losing Flanagan. Uh, Magnum's a junior, and that's really all that we have as far as scholarship point guards go. Uh, but we'll see what happens here. At this point, the contact period is over, so it's just forwarding it until we see if we can get a decision, if we can get a good decision here. Uh, from the, the offer that we have out. 
that would be awesome let's take a quick look while we're here at strategy see what we're doing i will just run in high post shuffle 60% offensive uh, set usage obviously Allen Flanagan and O's are all over these sets uh, they definitely have got the experience with it Winland's getting there and he'll continue to get there Davis will continue to get there uh, Mangum as well as we move through these practice sessions here yeah A&M stole that one from us which sucks but you know, we'll deal with it that's alright so I think 60% what are we gonna be running here we're gonna be running like an Allen Yeah, I like I like that setup. I like this setup. We're good on our zone. We're really not coaching a whole lot of man to man. Uh, we've got that you know ten percent usage just so if you absolutely have to have it at the end of the game or something, but man, I wonder if I shouldn't just take that out. I'll leave it as is for now. And we also need to take a look at depth. So if the AI does it, uh, do I like that? I think I like that. Look at this. No, I don't care for that at all. Well, that's not going to work for me. We need to take a look at our roster. So what I'm looking at here is, you know, the, the scoring rating obviously is always uh, extremely important, along with defense, in my opinion, another very important one. And I can see right away, you know, Flanagan, uh, Magnum, Kellum, O's, and Winland are all sevens as far as scoring goes. Um, Tremaine Allen's only a four, and he's not an excellent defender. He's okay. O's, Windlin, King, and Battier are all right. So what I'm actually thinking here, I'm trying to figure out if I want to start Magnum at the point, move Flanagan to the two, Davis to the three, and Kellum either coming off the bench or starting at the four. But he does, he's not a great inside scorer. Not the way, I mean, like, O's is a 9, and Winland's a 6 on the inside. Um, because, I mean, Magnum's a good score. He's got great handles, better passing than Flanagan. Let's take a look at the player types. So, Magnum's got the ma the ball magician player type, whereas Flanagan has nothing. Brian Davis has nothing. Kellum also has nothing. So it's a it's a problem because these two power forwards, neither one of them are great, right? How big is Kellum though? He's six six. Okay, not a great rebounder, kind of defensive. But if we ran like that, we would not have a whole lot of depth at the guard position. We could let Allen back up both guard spots. Huh. Alright. So the only thing I know for certain is there's no way that this walk-on is eating up all these minutes. Absolutely no way. Tremaine Allen at both guards. Magna... Who is this? No. Absolutely not. The computer loves their walk-ons. I do not care for them whatsoever. So we've got the starters. We've got Mangum and Allen. And then we need to decide on a power forward. And I really don't want it to be this walk-on loser. 
So we start O's and Winland. We really just need one more big man. Well, you know, here, this is what we do. We just put Marsh, put a Miles, and Fred King's our other decent freshman. We move him right up there behind Marsh, and we can let the these walk-ons be up here. Leonard is also a walk-on. Don't care for him whatsoever. So now we let the AI set the matrix, and we're off and running. Perfect. All right, we got our depth chart. We got our strategy set. We got our recruits coming in. We got three out of the four recruits coming in. Let's see if maybe we got an email up. There we go, Patrick Hurd coming in. So we didn't get our top point guard prospect, but we got Patrick Hurd. One final look here at this recruiting class before we go full on into games. So Patrick Hurd, who just committed four-star point guard, barely outside the top 100. Uh, he was decent at camp. So we will definitely take it. Uh, Brian Benton, the center, again, decent at camp. Uh, Three-star guy. Again, top 150 in the nation as far as rankings go. I don't know that his camp performance really uh, supports that. But we move on to Lon Davis, who was top 25 at Houston. So as we're, we're going to lose Mike O's this season, but bringing in Lon Davis, I think, is going to support us on the inside. I expect big things out of him almost immediately. And then... The star of the show, our man, Awash. Four-star prospect. Not quite in the top 50, but top five at Houston and top 25 at Indy. This player is going to be a star at Missouri, assuming that he qualifies. And that it, this is a huge test of my theory. So uh, we can see it play out here in real time. I'll tell you, I'm 95% confident he's going to be just fine. But we're going to figure it out here real soon, and I might look like a huge dummy uh, in about five minutes. So we'll find out. <laughs> Stay tuned to see if you can if you can make fun of me for the rest of the entire night, or if I uh, turn out to be correct. Uh, so, getting that practice in, getting these young guys up to speed, uh, let that depth build up, get them a little bit of experience, gives them the edge on these various sets. But we're into and we're into November now, so red shirt reminder. And this actually is a team that I should probably consider uh, whether or not I want to red shirt any players. Uh, like Barber could certainly be a consideration. Uh, as could Wilcox, maybe. I'm not crazy about his scoring or defensive ratings, and I do think he could develop quite nicely. Not worried about playing time. Because, uh, obviously, you know, Davis and Allen are, our, are getting the bulk of our time here. So Wilcox as a redshirt isn't a terrible idea. Uh, not enough depth at small forward or power forward, or center for that matter. Uh, not enough depth anywhere else to consider any redshirts. Now, do we, do we redshirt Barber or Wilcox? Either or both. I certainly think that we redshirt Wilcox. So we want him around in the program for sure. Barber, you know, who knows? He should develop, but we're not really in the business of recruiting uh, busts over here, so I expect him to develop, but uh, there's no guarantees. Uh, I think Wilcox is certainly going to be a valuable player. So let's redshirt him because we've still got the depth, right? We've still got four guards that are extremely solid scholarship guys, plus we've got this walk-on. Um who can play. So I'm not crazy about walk-ons, but if it just needs to be my fifth guy on the guard depth chart, I'm good with that. All I really need are three guards to get by. Four is enough. Uh, five is a luxury. So six would be a waste. So that's why we throw Wilcox the red shirt. He shouldn't be concerned about the minutes. He's a freshman. He's got great potential. He's got great ability as well. He's just not quite ready. So hopefully he develops that scoring a little bit, develops that defense. But guys, this time to... Stop talking about it. Go out and do it. Let's get on the hardwood. Let's get those Tigers out there. A little SEC basketball. This is the launch year. We're going from, well, what I said, we're, at, we're going to 65 or higher. From We're at 61 right now. We're going to end up 65 prestige or higher. But we should compete for the SEC championship. We should definitely compete for a Sweet 16 bid. Mike O's, Raheem Flanagan, 
even Tremaine Allen, who stuck with us through all the uh, you know, all the complaints, all the personality clashes. Tremaine Allen is still here. So that first class we recruited here into Missouri, uh, this is their uh, this is their victory parade uh, off into you know the NBA or probably Europe for these guys. But uh, oh, we need to get. Uh, my, I must have been running my solo saving the ACC. Let me get over to SEC basketball. It's where it's at here in 2026, and we get the home game against Hampton. So, oh, look at that. So I, I want to be competing for that SEC championship. We got the number one team in the country in our division with the Kentucky Wildcats there. Uh, but we're going to host Hampton, and we dispatch them. E oh, Mike O's just going nuts right out of the gate with 28 points. Say, so, look, it's my senior season. I'm doing Mike O's things. I'm throwing down 28 points at home against Hampton to start it off. So that's the way to get it started. Oh, there's a nice matchup. Number one versus number two early in the season on a neutral court. Be curious who won out on that one. I'm ready for it. This is the season I've been waiting for ever since we got here. Get this entire roster full of guys that I brought in, full of guys that I trust. You know, they might not all be ready for the the absolute, like, not every player on the roster has to be ready to start for a Sweet 16 type program. Uh, you just got to have guys uh, developing as you go. And there we go. All right, a little bit closer than we'd like to see against Old Dominion, but eight point win. For some reason, Leonard played a lot. I'm not sure what that was all about. Leonard got 18 minutes in there, and that's because O's had five fouls, Flanagan with four, Winland was in foul trouble. So, yeah, we don't have great depth there. Now, I don't know why Leonard... We need to take another look at the depth chart. All right, Kellum sore back, that's fine. I mean, Leonard's behind Marsh and Smith, and neither of them are designated to play any minutes at center. So that is definitely the reason. Cordell Smith, 6'7", Marsh, 6'7". Because Leonard is just, he can't play defense, he can't score. He's a decent rebounder, an inside shooter. But uh, we got Smith playing all the minutes here at the power forward and the small forward. Let's see Marsh see at least he can play better defense score better the inside shooting isn't quite there but I trust a guy like Marsh far more than a guy like Leonard so let's get Marsh squared away to play some center and then let the AI rework this matrix uh, so hopefully that squares that one away oh what's up CTG just subscribed love to see it appreciate it Chris is off to move the CBGM so we're going to get a CBGM update coming out here shortly. You guys definitely stick around. If anybody's checking that out while I'm live, feel free to mock me in chat. Good with that. So yeah, hopefully that solves the problem of us playing a walk-on center that many minutes because that's just silliness. Uh, we've got power forwards to do that. Although they're young, still developing, uh, I just don't need any of that. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, the man tells you, I tell you, I got a plan, I got a theory, and it works out over and over. Awash, 2.2 GPA, signed his LOI, he's good to go. Everybody signed, everybody's qualified. We're rolling, baby. Oh, not only this year, like, that's the thing, this snowball's so hard. So this year, I think we're going to have a big season. So we're going to make a huge jump. Excuse me. I was on the road for like eight hours today so uh <laughs> ctg watching master let's see who is it that you're watching on your uh, second monitor while you're watching me over here but anyway it, it snowballs so hard right we're at 61 now we're i figure we're jumping to at least 65 maybe high 60s by the end of this stream then we bring in a wash you know we put him in with everybody else we've recruited the brian davises the linlands the magnums i mean it it's going to go nuts, guys. 
So now we're headed on the road to USC. So let's see how this goes. I'm interested to see how we play away from home. USC's 1-1 one one so far. They have dropped a home game. We'll see if we can make it 2. Not quite. So we fall by 7. Sorry, we didn't get huge games out of anybody on the road there. So, uh, so we're not an elite team. No shock. Never thought that we were elite. I do think we're competing for an SEC title. I do think we're competing for a Sweet 16. Um, I certainly don't think we're a national championship Final Four type of team. But this is this is definitely the year we're going to go off. We're going to make noise big time. Big time. Coming back home for a game against the Red Hawks of Miami, Ohio. Coming into Mizzou Arena. Protect that home court. Protect that home court. Young men, that's right. Give them nothing. Mike O's says, give me all 17 of these rebounds. My goodness. Mike O's with the early season domination. Leading the charge for your Missouri Tigers. Man, it's good to see. When they just come into their own, right? A guy that you knew was going to be good. He just develops. Does it over the course of a few years. Now he's a senior. And now he's just... It's just pure domination out of Mikos at this point. And you know, Flanagan isn't putting up gaudy numbers the way that O's is, but he's just out there facilitating. You know what I mean? He, he's a steady hand at the point guard position. So you got to love to see that. So now we got Western Michigan at home. And, and just, again, like thinking, thinking forward, right? Big year now. Next year we bring in Washington. We still got a handful of players to surround him with. And then, you know, we're going to lose Flan again, but then we bring in Magnum, who's going to be a senior. Uh, and then at that point, you know, what are we? Uh, up in toward the 70s in prestige. Then you can start looking at those one-and-done type players, or at least the, the borderline players, uh, and just move into another entire echelon of, of athletes that you're recruiting. So... Taking care of business against Western Michigan. Mike O's with a massive double-double. Brian Davis decides to drop 22. The old double-deuce out of Brian Davis. And I believe Davis is a sophomore, possibly a junior. Yeah, 17 boards is no joke, that's for sure. So we're rolling along. We're developing these guys, you know. And... That's that's the great thing when you keep bringing in talent after talent after talent. It's fine again and O's walk out the door, and what do we have? Oh, all right, top 25 guy from Indy to stick with, with Brian Davis and with Bryce Lindland and with Magnum. Like, get out of here, right? They're just solid year after year. So good. This is the this is the time to really dive in and, and start playing some ball. All right, the Vermont Catamounts. Yeah, the Catamounts want to come into Mizzou Arena. Let's see what we got. See if old Mike O's got something for him. Oh, that he does. The whole team's got something for him. 101 to 73. The whole team had something for him. All those walk-ons that I buried on the depth chart, they're dropping 20 points out there. My goodness. Can't, that, that team, whew. 0-5 and, and getting drubbed by 30. Yikes. Looks like a tough uh, road to hoe there for the Vermont Catamounts here in the 2026-2027 season. Still need somebody to see when this came out and see if I'm on a once-a-week pace. So I'd like to, if we can't maintain at least once a week, if not, maybe try to push it a little harder than that even. I'd love to have, you know, 50 seasons into this. Uh, by the time the next version of this game comes out. So we just got to see. It can't be mid-April. The Denver Pioneers. All right. 0-2 on the road so far this season. Nothing changing. Mike O's with double doubles. Brian Davis there with the scoring load. And Raheem Flanagan uh, just being the glue man that holds the team together. And you just keep chugging along. Yes, it's bad teams at home, uh, but I got news for you. We play in the SEC. There's going to be a lot of average and bad teams at home. Uh, so you take care of those games, 
you you try to steal a few on the road here and there, especially if you're playing a bad team on the road. At, at this point, you need to start beating bad road teams. And uh, you should probably steal a win here and there against a, an average road team. I don't expect to be competing with Kentucky on the road or, let's see, what's this? This is Illinois at our place. Yeah, this is going to be home against Illinois. It looks like a really good Illinois squad. So this will be a nice test early in the year. I think this should probably be a very, very close game. And I actually, I, I don't know what Illinois' roster looks like. So obviously, we've got players that I really like and players that have developed really well for us over a number of years. We don't really have any superstars or anything. Here's Tremaine Allen. He still hates me. What's new? Just got to bounce over and check those emails every now and then to make sure that you don't have, like, player relationship stuff going on in the locker room where they hate each other because at that point like you've got to kick one of them off or else you're going to lose them to transfer so got to know which of your players hate the other ones but uh you know this is going to be a big early season matchup it, we don't have any superstars i don't know whether illinois does or not oh louisville's getting dropped might need a, might need a new coach there in louisville after this season you never know i don't know who it might be Oh, I don't know who, who could do that, but uh, before we get there, before we get there, let's see what we can do against this Illinois team. This would be a real good indicator of you know, how close we are. If we lose this game by double digits, I'll, I'll be really brokenhearted. I think this should be a pretty close game. And I actually think that if we're what I hope we are, we win. Right here, baby. Mizu. Over the Illini by 11 points. Brian Davis for 23. Raheem Flanagan throwing it down. That's what I'm talking about. Number 12, number 14, whatever they were, comes into your house. You send them packing. 11-point victory at home. So that's exactly what I meant. Those are ex This is exactly where I thought we were. All right. Unless Illinois is a huge pretender, this is exactly where I thought we were. And, you know, you watch, yeah, that was the first big game that we've had. But, I mean, look at that record already starting to pile up again. Second year in a row, we're at 7-1 and one right now. We played a lot of, lots of nobodies at home, fair enough. Uh, but there's quite a few nobodies at home throughout the rest of our schedule, too. So it's not like this stops at some point. You know, the thing is, when you're a bad team, when you're an NIT team, uh, when you're a team that's going to get bounced early in tournaments... You know, you lose those games at home. You lose at home to bad teams because you just you're not consistent enough. You don't have enough depth, and that's not happening to us so far. So I feel very, very good about that. Keep on pushing through. We're getting toward the end of December, which means we're getting toward the end of these cupcakes. But we still got UC Riverside, Louisiana Tech, and Bradley all at home before we get into SEC play. I don't know if that's our last three or if we have any more. Hopefully that, I mean, 12-27, past that, we ought to be into SEC play. But, you know, SEC's got cupcakes too. Kentucky, Florida, a bunch of lame teams like that. Ooh, Arkansas looking like they got a good season going. So here comes Riverside into Mizzou Arena. 20-point win, Flanagan leading the way. Wendland decides he's going to go out and get his 12 rebounds for once. So kind of stealing Mike-O's gimmick there. Uh, O's likes to go for the huge double digit rebound numbers and Bryce Wendland said not so fast I'll take my fair share of the glass cleaning duties tonight and yeah we do have SEC play coming up after Bradley so two more nice easy home games then we get into SEC play and that's when we find out like we think we know what we have right now conference play is when you find out for sure there's no doubt you can't get through conference play without knowing what you've got so we'll know what we've got very very soon it's going to start off with a really tough one on the road against Florida. Oh, and now see, this is what you can't do, is lose games like that at home to absolute garbage teams like Louisiana Tech. And that's when we get the post-game incident. Wendland yelling at O's? What is this crap? They're both starters. So that's an absolute nightmare. The season was chugging right along, and then that happens. And now our two best big men are fighting. So just like that, the highs and the lows, <laughs> they bring you back to earth, right? <laughs> like, what is this nonsense? T 
team relationship drops way off course. Well, I mean, we there's just nothing to be done about that except for cross our fingers Winland doesn't transfer out, which is a very real threat at this point. I mean, his team relationship's god-awful. So things like that happen. There's got to be some setbacks along the way, right? It's not a... It's not an interesting stream. Just every single thing I say, like, just pops into existence and happens. Like, there's got to be some road bumps. Um, I didn't expect Louisiana Tech at home to be a road bump. But, uh, I guess, you know, if O's and Winland want to uh, just fight each other on the court, uh, that'll make any game tough. All right, let's turn it around, folks. No more of that. No more of that nonsense. And that's a such a bad loss. Louisiana Tech. <laughs> Curious what they're like net or whatever is. CBGM updated. Glad to hear it. Welcome, welcome back. We just took a devastating loss at home to Louisiana Tech, and. O's and Winland started fighting each other, and of course that was like one game after we beat Illinois at home by 11, so we're uh, we're staggered, but we're still on two feet. Get back up against Bradley. O's does it again with 27. So he reestablishes himself there. Uh, so, yeah, we, we took a big shot. We're back up. Now we're on the road against a ranked Florida team. Then we got LSU at home, and then we got number six, the Alabama Crimson Tide, number six in the country, coming into Mizzou Arena. I, 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 I still got good feelings. You know, you, you're going to lose here and there. We shouldn't have lost that one, but I'll take it. Sometimes there's just mysterious things happen, right? It's not fun if you win all the time. It's, there's got to be the threat of losing. I'm ready to go down into down into Gainesville, see what we can do against these Gators. I'm still pumped up for the rest of this season. That's I mean, nine and two in the out of conference. That's not too shabby. see how these emails came in see if we're getting anything else about this backstage um, locker room fights anything like that keep an eye out for it see if we need to talk to one of them or suspend one of them you know I'm not beyond suspending one of them now the thing is you saw how both the team relationships went all the way down to 1% I've seen that before and if you kick one of them off the team a lot of times the other one will start to repair his relationships with the rest of the team over time and you can stop them from transferring out. Uh, the problem being here is that the two players fighting are only two decent inside players and there's no way on earth I'm kicking either of them off the team. So, Unless it's just non-stop fights, which it's only been one so far. So let's cross our fingers and go down. Let's we'll see if we can get some grilled gator here. Take it. Oh, so daggone close in Gainesville. So close, we lose by two, and we do have another team incident. So let's see where this one is. Please don't be in the same exact place. Fred King and Bryce Wendland. All right. So nobody likes Bryce Wendland. Is that what I'm getting here? He's a he's a what's he, personality. He's got an average personality. His team relationships actually bouncing back, so that's not bad. O's team relationship is in the tank, but big deal. Fred King, the freshman, what are you running your yap about? He's a disruptive force. All right, so. All right. So he at least apologized, but we need to keep a close eye on Fred King. And if we got to boot him, you know, I'll suck it up and boot him. Uh, there's worse things that have happened. We're bringing in a, another power forward and another center. Uh, Fred King is a, a cog in the machine for now but we're, how close was the game at Florida guys on the road against a ranked conference opponent and we come up two points short such a good game 
such a missed opportunity. And now we try to get back on track. We're at home against LSU, and LSU's looking like they've got a decent team as well. So we need to win these type of home games if we want to... If we want to have the season that we expect, we need to win these kind of home games. But there's no promises here. These are two good basketball teams going at it. So LSU and Missouri, Tiger on Tiger action, and we take it by 15. That's right. It's O's, it's Wendland, and it's Brian Davis. Did Davis go for 22 again? Oh, well, man, he's sending me some kind of signal about double deuces. I don't know what that means, but uh, Brian Davis, quite the score. He's definitely a, an integral part of this team. So very good to see that. Well, now I'm like scared to check the emails every week. Always glad to just see scouting reports. Those are the only kind of in-season emails I need. And I don't, I still don't know what to be more excited about. This, how ridiculous this season is going to be, or like a wash. That's definite program changer. You love to have those kind of guys waiting in the wings. Absolutely got to love having it. All right, so now we get the big, big game at home. Number 10 in the country, the 12-4 and four Crimson Tide. And they think they're going to come in here and push us around, but we got something for them. We've been waiting. We've been waiting to jump up on somebody like this, and oh, we had it set, and we failed. And, of course, every time we got to lose, somebody's got to yell at somebody else. So what do we have this time? Mike Wendland and Mike O's again. Unreal. Like, these two guys just don't care for each other. I got to at least call him and tell him to knock it off, right? All right, so I went straight to that second option, and he at least apologized, so... I mean, I don't know what else to do here. Brandon Marsh is decent, but like he, he comes nowhere close to replacing what Wendland's doing. Wendland's getting seven rebounds a game. It's frustrating. This team has it's got its chemistry issues, and that's it is going to hold them back, I think. You can see the cracks starting to show. Wanting to argue after every single loss. Really making me mad. Well, we got to look at this. This is a stretch of tough games. We could end up 1 and 4 in the SEC real easily. We could end up 1 and 5 real easily. We got two road games against some really good teams. So, after a tough home loss to the number 10 Alabama team, now we go on the road at 12 and 3 Vandy, then on the road at number 8 South Carolina 14 and 1. SEC is no joke this year. So I tried to make the cupcake joke earlier, but this is obviously not the year to be doing that. Uh, the SEC significantly stronger this year. Woo! Well, they were significantly stronger. We just went into Vandy and wrecked them. So I don't know who Vandy played to get that big gaudy record that they had. But we just Oh, what was that? Did y'all see that? Jamie Dixon's the head coach of Kentucky. I just now noticed that. So, uh, no, again, no idea who Vandy beat up on to get that record, but they didn't deserve it. We walked into their court and smashed them by 20. So, pulls us back to even in the SEC. We definitely needed, you know, after the tough loss at home to Louisiana Tech, which was just dumb, then coming up just short at Florida, uh, coming up short at home against LSU, we definitely needed to pull off a road victory. That was a good one at Vandy. I don't know if we're going to be as lucky here headed into South Carolina. They're 15-1 and on the year, 4-0 and in SEC play. Uh, so this is definitely looking like an elite team right now. And, you know, we're just not that yet. We're not that yet. We're on the verge. We're on the cusp. Not quite there lost by 10 and every time we lose we've got to have an incident so this team hates each other and it's obvious that the chemistry is holding them back fred king about bryce wendland again so sometimes i always give these guys the benefit of the doubt i always take a look but look at fred king can't score inside can't score can't rebound at all can't play defense 
So you already caused problems once. Have two weeks on the bench. See see what that does for you. And get back to me. Of course, the computer wants to move these walk-on losers back ahead of my... Um, it did it again uh, just because I suspended the guy? I cannot stand when it moves all these walk-on guys back up ahead when I've already set this once on how I wanted it to be. Alright, so that's Magnum Allen Marsh... All right, I guess we've got to deal with some of this just because King decided he can't stop mouthing off. But so we've got uh, you know all kinds of drama this year. <laughs> they want to fight each other after every single loss. Our two best inside players can't get along. Of course, we're not deep enough on the inside to deal with it whatsoever. <sighs> but we move on. We got big things still ahead. Still going to be a good year. We should still be an NCAA team. And we've got a, another another crop of talent coming in right behind them. So you keep on keeping on, see what happens. We're 11 and 5 now. We're almost to the end of January. So we ought to have the SAT scores in here soon. With everybody got the LOIs on board, I'm not worried about it. But sometimes people like to see the SEC, uh, the SAT scores just to be certain. So here we go. Ole Miss coming into town. Uh... Look like they beat up on some non-conference. Not so hot in the SEC so far. Woo! We keep it that way. Flanagan, Kellum, and O's go off. Good stuff there. Avoid the loss. Avoid the drama back, uh, back in the locker room. I keep on wanting to say backstage. Um, winning cures everything, right? Winning cures everything. So we're going to get on a neutral court in that SEC tournament. And it's going to be on, I'm telling you. It's going to be uh, really exciting. So now we go to LSU. So LSU got us at home. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can even it up. Go in there and steal one from them. It's not like they're, they're not uh, you know world beaters or anything. They got us. Let's see if we can return the favor. Oh, of course not. But the good news is we finally lost a game and didn't have a huge fight backstage. So I don't know if that's because we've suspended Fred King or exactly what's going on there. But uh, at least we didn't have that drama again. Now here we get Florida coming into to Mizzou Arena. Let's see if we can take care of some more business. You know, record-wise, we're a we're a step behind where I would really like to be. But I still think come tournament time, we're as dangerous as it gets on a neutral floor. So let's see. We came close to knocking off Florida in Gainesville. And here at home, demolished them by 30. So that's what I'm talking about. We're dangerous. Dangerous when it gets to a neutral floor. I mean, if we're even on the road and we win by 30 at home, we're taking care of Florida on a neutral court, right? Getting close to the end of January, 13-6, and six, still 500 in conference. Let's see if we can flip this around and uh, start moving up toward the top of these conference rankings. Really don't want to hang around at 500. I really want to be right there at the top. So let's see if we can go out and make it happen. Since he was ranked earlier this year, now they're going on the road getting taken out by Tulane. So Tennessee, you know, it's rare for me to see Tennessee ranked this highly, but Tennessee's ranked number three in the country right now, and now we got to go into Knoxville. So the SEC, is it's just much deeper than it was last season. Facing a lot of good ranked teams here, Kentucky looking good, Tennessee looking good, Bama, um, South Carolina already doing well, so 
headed into Knoxville, see if we can come out with no. We got a beat down and another loss, another locker room incident. So this has very much become a theme, and I'm completely over it. At this point, even, I mean, as much as Mike O's is doing and we need him to compete for the rest of the year, I'm ready for him to graduate and get rid of the tension with Wendland. If, assuming that's who's arguing, if it's Fred King again, I'll just kick him off the team. Oh, Tremaine Allen and Brian Davis. The whole team hates each other, and that's what I'm telling you. At this weird, that weird level of recruiting we were at, all these guys are mouthy. You know, if we, if we can get to the guys like Washington... Our man, Awash, uh, those kind of guys are going to have much better attitudes. But these guys, like I don't know what it is about this second-tier talent, but they all just hate each other. And it's killing any kind of chemistry that we could try to build up and put together. All right, so we can call up and yell at them. Not a whole lot else we can do. Keep our fingers crossed. You know, a handful of these guys are going to graduate. Uh, maybe that's a good thing, and you know, just hopefully that improves going forward. But Fred King's definitely very much on my radar. If he peeks his head up again, uh, he could very easily uh, find himself on the free agent list. Let's go check the depth chart though, because his his suspension may be close to over, and we do really need the depth. So if we don't have to get rid of him, I don't want to. All right, his suspension is over. So we want to move him right up here. Let the AI reset the matrix. Oh, hold on. Reset it like that. There we go. All right, cross our fingers. No more incidents. No more, uh, no more locker room incidents. No more red emails. We're home against the Texas A&M Aggies. They just stole... Oh, what did Texas... Texas A&M stole our point guard? So let's give them a little bit of retribution. No. Another home loss. Another team incident. And at this stage of the game, like, the backstage incidents are just destroying us. We can't get it together. The, this entire team is imploding. They all hate each other. All right, so Bryce Wendland has been at the center of quite a bit of these. Uh, let's go ahead and suspend him for a week and see if that's enough. So with, with him out, no, most of them are not bad personalities. They just don't get along. Fred King is a bad personality. Most of the rest of them are just, I don't know, they're just being a pain. So I talked earlier about doing this, and I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger on it. We're going to move Kellum up here, Brian Davis to the three, Flanagan to the two, and insert, oh wait, and Magnum at the one. Magnum, Flanagan, Davis, Kellum, Ose. That's what we're going to roll with. I talked about it earlier in the year. We let Tremaine Allen uh, play the point and shooting guard. He's the backup at both of those. We got Fred King that can play the small forward and the power forward, and Marsh at the center. Set that matrix, and oh, not exactly what I was looking for. Uh, we can try this out. So yeah, only the one really bad personality. It's just a bunch of guys that won't get along and, and play nice together. Really, is all that it is. But it's, I mean, it's destroying this season. It's taking it completely off the rails. And the SEC being deeper and stronger isn't helping. But these guys are all just in terrible moods. They all hate the race, the rest of their teammates. So it's a bad situation. Definitely nowhere near the, the season that I expected us to have.
Last year, I think that we lost seven games all year. Uh, this year, we got rid of Jarrell Fry, who was a disruptive force and a really bad personality and didn't even play last year, brought everybody else back, and we're having a worse season. These guys hate each other worse than ever. Uh, it's just very frustrating. How about that? And we get smoked on the road, 30-point loss to Auburn, who's not even that great of a team. So at this point, this season is an entire dumpster fire. 30-point loss. That should not ever happen. Nothing even close to that. We can try one more game. If it's another beatdown like that, we'll have to try one of these freshmen at the power forward position. Could have just been a bad matchup. Could have been an off night. Never know. I mean, we did just suspend one of our three or four best players, but... Uh, you wouldn't expect it would be that kind of beatdown. All right, so Arkansas coming in. Let's see if the home court can save us, get us up over the hump, or uh, if we're headed, like at this point, we're very much headed for not the NCAA tournament even, whereas we should have been a Sweet 16 kind of team. So we do get back on track there, 85 points. Nice little 18-point uh, victory over a top 25 team at home. So we need more of those and less of the other things. Hopefully with Winland sitting, he either gets his act together or you know it gives him enough time away that you know, they can pull it back together a little bit, hopefully. We definitely got to get back on track. We couldn't let that just continue to fester, so we had to suspend somebody. Is his suspension over? It is. All right, let's get him back in the lineup. So, who do we want to take out? Actually, let's not get him back in the lineup. Let's not. Let's move him up. To right there. Let the AI set our matrix. And let's play this for a minute and see what happens. Gives us a little bit different look, you know. We got all of that talent and depth at the guard. And uh, it's really kind of going to waste when we're so sh not deep on the inside to be playing our, our only two centers simultaneously in the starting lineup. But, of course, now we go into number one Kentucky, and they should definitely take advantage of the, the chaos that this season has been for Missouri. So this could potentially be very bad. Of course, it could be a redeeming moment. We don't want to rule out the possibility of a redeeming moment. Uh, but it could get ugly here in Lexington as the Missouri Tigers go to face off against the Kentucky Wildcats. And it was close. Ladies and gentlemen, it was close. That's a three-point game on the road against number one. So I don't know what in the world happened. Losing by 30. But we're playing basically the same lineup. And we just played the number one team to three points. If we could get these personalities together, this team is still exactly as dangerous as I thought that they were. Uh, but, you know, it's a big ask. They've got time to do it. We've got Mississippi State at home. That's a winnable game. That gets us back to 6-8. and eight. Georgia on the road is a winnable game. It's not an easy win, but it's winnable. But you got to do first things first. Let's take care of A&M. This sim has been a roller coaster, man. I, I, the highs of the recruiting in the early season and then just came crashing down. Now let's see if we can climb back up or if we're just going to putter off into the end of this season. Ooh, coming back strong, baby. Coming back strong. I like Mangum running the point. I like Davis and Kellum both in the starting lineup. This is going okay so far. 
This could be, you know, this could be the tweak that the team needed. It got Wendland the suspension, which he very much had earned at that point. Alright, let's see if we can pick it up. We need a road win here, and we've got a chance to do it at Georgia. We've stolen one. Well, who, who'd we get earlier this year? We got a road win earlier. I can't remember offhand who it was. But we... Oh, it was at Vandy. We got one. Uh, but we definitely have another chance here at Georgia. Again, no guarantees. I mean, we did lose at home by 30. to Or on the road by 30 to somebody. But uh, headed down to Georgia. Two teams that are both 6-8 and eight in the SEC. Uh... uh we got to get it back on track. We got to win here. Get my boy Mike O's. Get my boy Raheem Flanagan. Get it back on track against Georgia, baby. That's right. Magnum doing it. Doug Kellum is coming on strong down the stretch. And we win another road game in conference. So now here we go. We're at Alabama. Then we get Vandy at home. So you figure likely loss, likely win. And then at home against South Carolina to finish it off. And that is the game that determines... Uh, assuming that my first two predictions are correct, at home versus South Carolina determines whether we go 500 in conference or whether we have a losing conference record. It's also a very big game when it comes to our NCAA tournament chances. Now, personally, I'm not worried about our NCAA chances because I think we're pulling this season together and we're going to go in and win that SEC tournament. Call him a shot. We're winning the SEC tournament. What's up, Doritos Loco Tacos? What's good? Yeah, this is an awesome game, man. I'm glad that you like the content. Uh, hope you, I don't know how long you've been watching or whatever, but uh, you know, I, I've been trying to get push this content for a long time because it's a, it's a great game. I love playing it. So, all right, could be a moment of truth type of thing. We're, we're headed into Bama. They're actually only 8-7 and seven in the SEC. So let's see if our team, our, our newly found, like we brought in Phil Jackson, we got the, you know, kumbaya whatever it was uh you know we're, we're we're pulling it together here all for one and one for all right <laughs> that's right we're fighting back baby we're, we're back on we're back on track we went the whole season went whoa, 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 and now we're, we're back up here and we just took down a top 25 team on the road the alabama crimson tide whoo so now we got to take care of business at home against Vandy. And then South Carolina is, is a little bit more of a freebie. Yeah, I'm not counting them out at all. That's what I said. Even before that win, I called it. We're winning this SEC tournament. Uh, I'm not the only one that's putting out content on this game. If you haven't found the CBGM yet, you're missing out. You need to jump on the GM Games Discord. we got a huge multiplayer uh, league with like 150 human teams, and they're pushing out tons of content for that league. Also, CTG, who was in the chat earlier, I'm pretty sure they're putting out content on this game. So uh, I've been doing it for a while as well. It, it's definitely out there, but I know it's, uh, you know, it, it's not as popular as some other titles, but uh, it is what it is. I, I'm having an absolute blast with it. I'm glad to see that you're here. I hope you're having as much fun with it as I am. Uh, but but there's others out there that are having a whole lot of fun with it too. So you know, check them out look for them, especially on the Discord. Now, take care of business. Don't slip up. You're, you're making your run now. Don't slip up. Oh, that is the definition of not slipping up. Woo, 81 to 34? Jeez. Oh, oh, what was that 47 points? Whew. My word. <laughs> so it looked really grim not very long ago. We went on a little winning streak in the conference, pulled out a big road win, an absolute like, domination, crushing victory thorough thrashing i don't know the right verbiage to explain what we just did to vandy um 
suffice it to say, we didn't slip up. And that's all I was asking for. Don't slip up. Now we get South Carolina at home. Are, is the lineup changed? The suspension? The attitudes? Is all of it finally coming together? Can we knock off a top 10 team at home? Or is this false hope? I say we win it. I say we're going 10-8 and eight in the SEC. We're going into the postseason on a hot streak. We're knocking off the Gamecocks. You're not. You're not bringing it into the zoo. You staggered us, SEC. You landed some body blows. We were hurting, but you know what? You're not bringing it in the zoo. You can't do it. You can't do it. We got too much pride down here. Yeah, we fight like brothers throughout the season, but when it comes down to it, you're not knocking us off at home. Get out of here, South Carolina. Go! Oh God, they got us by 15. All right. So we tried to talk him up. The pregame speech obviously didn't work. Yes, I'm very much a Cards fan. I don't know uh, what would have given that away other than the the moniker Cards and uh, that sort of thing. But yes, I'm very much a Louisville Cardinal fan. God, a 15-point beatdown at home. So we couldn't get it together that much. But let's put us on a neutral court here. I I still think we're making a run in this, this SEC tournament. I still think it. They can't hold us down. Come tournament time, we're going to make it happen. Let me let me refuel the streamer beverage here. All right. We're refueled. We're ready for the postseason. We're going to get a cracking right here in this SEC tournament. I definitely think, unless we go... I mean, we're winning the SEC tournament, so I don't have to worry about it. But uh, a game or two here should make us feel real safe uh, about the um, making the NCAA tournament. Thoughts on Louisville blowing big leads against Duke? Yeah, yeah, it was tough. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about this year. Of uh, So here is the underclassmen declaring. Obviously, we didn't have anyone declare. And... That's all we're worried about there. Louisville blowing big leads this year. is My thoughts are it was COVID. It was a weird year. Nobody got consistent practice. There's all these transfers. Like Sports in general are really weird right now. Nobody could be consistent. Nobody could practice consistently. Players were out for weird issues, missing weeks at a time for weird issues. Like I just, outside of the the Baylor Gonzaga National Championship game, which was the best two teams in the country, and I think the better team won it. Uh, so I, I don't want to take away anything from that. But like as as far as anything Louisville did or didn't do, I'm I'm not losing any sleep over it. Uh, I'm really ex- it was tough because Louisville's only inside player this year was going to be Malik Williams and he ended up only playing three games or something like that. So it was astounding. They even did as well as they did with, you know, very young inside players. Uh, Carly Jones was a heck of a transfer. Uh, I don't know. You know, I wish him the best of luck in the NBA, but if he, if, if his stock happens to slip and he comes back, I'd love to have him back. Uh, Same with David Johnson, but it doesn't appear that's going to be the case. So, We'll just see how, how it moves forward. Louisville's under a lot of pressure with uh, NCAA sanctions and all that stuff still looming, so it's hard for them to recruit. So it's just a weird period for Louisville. I hope they, they get through it, and five years from now we're having a different conversation. But for now it is what it is, and I'm not going to take it to heart uh, too hard. Either way, win or lose. Back into Missouri Tiger mode. We got Tiger on Tiger action. First, Our first round of SEC play. It's not the first round of SEC play. But as we start our march... Through the SEC tournament. Uh, Here we go. Missouri and Auburn. See what we can do. Make it happen. Make it happen. That's right. 13 points. O's, Magnum, and Davis. Loving it. All right. So now we get to prove it. We went into Lexington and we sent a message. We, We lost by three, but we sent them a very clear message. We It was a big sign. This said, wait till we get to Atlanta. 
Wait till we get in the Georgia Dome in the SEC tournament. We got something for these number one Kentucky Wildcats. And it's a big, fat L for loser, which is exactly what they are. We're sending them home early. Send them home early, boys. They got nothing for Oh, they had something for us. They, they had a lot for us, actually. I think they were quite mad that we played them that close at home. So one win in the SEC tournament. And, guys, 19-12, and 9-9 and nine on the year. We are firmly, firmly on the bubble. Let's go check this bubble watch first. Hit the dashboard, see what our the 49 net ranking. See, that's where that, that Louisiana Tech loss is really going to hurt us. A couple of those super dumb losses we took in the SEC are really going to hurt us. Let us see what we've got over here when it comes to uh, polls and media, bubble watch. Let's see what this bubble watch says. I don't feel great about it. Where are we at? Oh, there we are. We're on the right side of it for now. So a relatively low net rating, but we're on the right side of it. So I do think we're like a like a 9-10 seed type team. But according to that, it looks like we might be in. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, 11 seed very well could be 11 seed. So disappointed not to have a better showing, but... The SEC was just packed this year, especially compared to last year. Last year, the SEC was very down. This year, they must have just killed it in recruiting. And uh, there was a lot of ranked teams out there. So what I thought was going to be a season where we elevated was definitely a step back. But we've still got a shot here uh, to make a little noise in this NCAA tournament, assuming that we make it. So let's check it out. We'll go region by region. Magazines and the media favored us to be in. Let's see what that committee did. Don't hate on us, committee. No playing it. We don't want to be in a playing game, right? Filling over rates. State, Virginia, Mercer. Okay, no playing game for us. So Kentucky gets the number one overall seed. UConn, Wichita State, Temple, a four seed. Interesting to see. Bama a six. All right, Texas grabs the one in Chicago. Virginia Tech a two seed. Michigan a three. Oklahoma State. There's your uh, UNC. Duke UNC in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Doritos Locos Tacos. What do you think about that? <laughs> Uh, definitely one thing that the game can improve on is the selection of these matchups because you're usually not going to have conference opponents like this in the first round. But there's only so much you can code up. That's definitely uh, understandable. And there comes Missouri right there next to them in the 10 slot. So we pull a 10 seed. We're in the tournament. We get Texas Tech in the first round. Tennessee grabs a 1. South Carolina a 2. Georgia State with a four seed. What is happening in New Orleans? Georgia State, an 11, the 11th best team in the country. And Coastal Carolina follows it up as a five seed. So there's some interesting seedings and some interesting rankings. There's St. Mary's, a one. Oklahoma, Oregon, Memphis. Okay. this I can, I can deal with this region a little bit better. But what is happening in that New Orleans region? Those are some really interesting, not only highly rated teams, but um, really crazy seedings. I know Chris has got to be drooling at the thought of that sort of thing happening in CBGM. Chris always loves to see like the the top ranked recruits and the best players all going to like these these off teams, right? Like don't go to the traditional powers, go somewhere else and make your name. And that's definitely what some guys are doing. Uh, at Georgia Southern and Coastal Carolina here in this save. Here at Missouri, we are looking forward to this first round matchup against Texas Tech. I uh, think we're going to have significantly better results here than we did in the last tournament. 
Uh, I don't think we don't have, even if we're facing Virginia Tech in the second round, that's nothing like facing Kentucky, uh, at least as it would appear after that 20-something point thrashing that we ate. So we're going to hope that we've got better luck here against Texas Tech. Like this whole season, it was it was up, it was down, it started to come way up, and now it's teetering. And like, which way is it going to go? Are we just going to stay here and maintain the status quo, or are we taking this to the next level? Let's find out right here. In the NCAA tournament, the first round of the NCAA tournament, Texas Tech and Missouri. I think we're going. We're going. Oh, four point. So all of my high hopes for a season that would take us up to the next level and it's just dashed, just like that. Nothing doing. One win in the SEC tournament, 10 seed in the NCAA, not a single win in the NCAA, didn't even win 20 games. Uh, that season was a massive underperformance, and I'm going to attribute a huge portion of that to just the consistent nonstop personnel issues personality conflicts that we had throughout the entire season they're just absolutely brutal and they were between a handful of our best players so uh, it was extremely disappointing uh, but sometimes you you just run into one of those teams that doesn't get along so gonna have to hold it together for another year the good news is we've got a lot of this talent coming back we are losing uh, some of the personality conflicts so we'll just see how it progresses. We're definitely bringing in a very, very solid class. And I'm very optimistic. I'm excited to see what they look like when they get uh, when they get onto campus. I'm especially excited to see what old AWOSH looks like. So, cautiously optimistic. And, not to mention, for you guys, the cool thing is the, the super bummer of a season really just makes me want to play uh, maybe another season tonight. So... Well, we'll see how far we get into that. Let's take a quick look here. At least we didn't do what Kansas did. They're not even in the NCAA tournament. Uh, let's take us a quick look at this NCAA tournament, see what the Final Four looks like. So in Buffalo, it was... Woo, look at St. Francis making a run as a 12 seed all the way out to the Elite Eight. Couldn't beat Kentucky. Kentucky moves out. What is going on? This whole The whole thing was crazy. UConn falls to Iowa State. Wisconsin knocks off Wichita State. Wisconsin can't knock off Kentucky. So uh, an entire region full of upsets, but ultimately it's the one seed. In Chicago, uh, another upset city, baby. Michigan State knocks out Texas, takes out the five seed Purdue. They're facing off against Duke, a six seed who knocked out Virginia Tech. And it's Duke, a six seed, that's moving on in New Orleans. All right, here we go. Again, it's crazy. Look at this. Mercer took out Coastal Carolina. Delaware State took out Georgia State. So we get this, and then it's ultimately Tennessee moving on over South Carolina. So, so far, I mean, the SEC is really dominating this tournament. You got Kentucky. Um, not anything in Chicago. But you get over here, it's Tennessee, South Carolina, Arkansas. So this is just nothing but SEC here in New Orleans and then finally in Denver St. Mary's came out couldn't hold off VCU and then VCU goes on to take out Oregon so your final four we got Kentucky versus Duke and Tennessee versus VCU a couple of one seeds from the SEC a couple of lower seeds one from the ACC and VCU who is from a different conference I, I think they're from the American I don't know we bounce back over to the game grid, play on through this, see what happens. But uh, really, really disappointed in this season. Really disappointed that. Uh, you know, if it was injuries that took it down, I could have accepted that. But for attitudes and like personalities to be what took it down, that really kind of pisses me off. All right, so VCU is going into the final, and I think they're playing Kentucky. All 
Oh, no, they might be playing... Yeah, they're playing Kentucky. Of course, <clears throat> to cap off a massive disappointment of a season, Kentucky wins a championship, which is pretty much my least favorite thing uh, in this game. I'd rather be hung up on during recruiting calls than to see Kentucky win another national championship. But, you can, I mean, Sean Bradley did big things, obviously. Jamie Dixon, coach of the year. First team All-Americans. Kentucky's got two of them. Second team All-Americans. Bounce over to the SEC. Take a look. Here's your second team All-Conference. Uh, you can see we were shut out of that. First team All-Conference. Mike O's. Grabbing another first-team all-conference award. 12 points a game. Almost eight rebounds a game. Heck of a career there out of Mike O's. And then individual awards. Mike O's grabs defensive player of the year. Um, but Arkansas's Pete White wrapped up freshman of the year, player of the year. And then Kevin Keats out of South Carolina, coach of the year. So there you have it. Disappointing year. Uh, that 65, 68, whatever it was. Uh, I don't know that we don't even slide back a little bit on prestige maybe. So... I definitely don't think we move forward much, if any. Hopefully, we just don't slide back. I do, before we go too far, want to take a quick look at Mike O's because he's a senior. He was a heck of a player. I want to see. So, yeah, 1,300 points throughout his career. 55% field goal shooter. And look, ooh, look at that. My man had 1,000 rebounds, right? Right? Is that 1,000 or is that 900? Nah, 900. He didn't get he didn't get to 1,000. Low 900s, but still, that's the closest to 1,000 rebounds I've seen out of anybody personally. 367 steals from a center. 205 blocks. Not too shabby. It's pretty good. How do you get the mods where you have real teams, names, logos, all that stuff? Go to the Wolverine Studios forums. Um, don't go to the college basketball topic. Go to the just like mods topic, I think. I think there's a completely separate mods uh, discussion on that board. But it's in there and you'll see it. Uh, and it's free to download. Uh, it has, a, I think, a like a Oh, uh, not Word. Uh, notepad. It's got like a notepad instructions, or maybe it's Word instructions. But there's there's instructions that come with it that explain to you uh, how to go about installing it. But it's free mod off of the forums built by the community. All right, so our season review. Yeah, we did. We slid backwards from 61 to 59. Complete opposite of what I thought we would do. Everything else went well. Qualified for the NCAAs, top half of the conference. Won the games we needed to win, but just didn't get it done in tournament time. Lost some bad games, and um, this is the complete opposite of what should have happened this year, which is infuriating. So now it's time for everybody's favorite game, which is going to be a really short version this year because there's no interesting job offers. Last year, we at least had UCLA to look at. Like, what am I supposed to look at this year? Iowa? That's all she wrote for this. Yeah, sure thing. Oh, Chris got the link. Nice work. All right. <clears throat> Take a look at this staff, see what we got. Everybody hanging out, no staff leaving. Let's see if we can just finish in advance without anybody getting offered another job. Get through this off season. So two big things that I want to see here going into next year is just how good is Awash, and does Bryce Windland transfer? Or anybody else, like any unexpected transfers, because that's all you know, very distinct possibilities.
right, so we're going to petition the board we've already got b plus facilities uh we're going to go for budget see what we can get out of them probably not much i mean we had a terrible season so they should just flat out deny us i would imagine request denied all right off season let's see what these rosters look like next year we take a look i don't know and we've, we've already been up two hours i don't know that there's a whole lot of value in going any further tonight uh, i think we cut it off once we get to june 26 as per the usual and maybe get another No, no, we didn't change anything there. There was no interesting job offers whatsoever. We're very much sticking with the zoo, the tigers. And we can just watch as this talent keeps coming in the door. Uh, but, yeah, the concern is how much talent walks out the door. Like, how many of these guys with bad attitudes? How bad do the personalities end up hurting the roster? So that'll be an interesting question. I'm mildly disappointed that I didn't roll with that roster change a little bit earlier where we stuck uh, Old Magnum into the point slot because he was such a better ball handler uh, and even a better passer. He had the better traits. But uh, I felt like having the two big guys on the floor was better for us. Uh, ultimately, I don't, I don't know if that was right or not. All right, only one open scholarship for next year. They're giving it. That's they're calling that the 29th ranked recruiting class. I feel like we're still. Look at San Diego. So look at Chris. Chris in San Diego State, number one overall. Pitt number two. No surprise there. <laughs> Iowa number four. I should have taken the Iowa job. Damn. Are going to try to build Missouri where you look to keep moving up the ladder. Oh, I've always got a roving eye. I would like to be content and build up Missouri. But I get frustrated with these tiny little budgets trying to compete uh, with schools that have more than twice the, the budget. So odds are if they don't improve the budget, then I'll probably grab one of the big jobs when they come open. Because, I mean, look what we're, we're going to be stuck with, like, what, $60,000? Okay. $63,000 for an entire recruiting season. So, I mean, you basically have to buy a premium report here. That takes us to 33000 Then just Indy and the Great Plains camps, that takes us back down to 25000 So, once again, we're completely broke. This should be – that roster looks thin. I, I kind of went like cross-eyed and looked away. That roster looked thin, so I wouldn't be surprised if somebody left here. Look at that. Three transfers out. Barber, I'm not too concerned about. Fred King was a disruptive force. Doesn't bother me all that much. Brennan Marsh, I don't understand that one. He had a good work ethic. Eh, he wanted a little bit better minutes. I don't understand Marsh leaving. But, uh, why not a basic report? The the premium gold reports in this year's version, to me, are absolutely required. Uh, because you, you get so much more information, and it's so much harder. Especially, now maybe on a different um, difficulty level, you could, you could mix that up a little bit more. But on the brutal recruiting difficulty especially at lower schools like you've got to know who you're competing with and where you stand when you start making your offers or else you really just waste your time I mean, you'll notice we pulled in three of our first four offers if you go back on this stream i don't know if you were on it earlier but when we went through recruiting season i identified four targets we landed three of them and then we landed our second choice at the other at the other position so Lost a handful of guys here. We definitely got some scholarships open for transfers. So Chris was looking for, for us to mix it up a little bit. Let's jump into the transfer portal here and see what's available. See if there's anything, anybody really interested in us that we want to roll with. There's a handful of guys that have interest. So that is definitely interesting. Small forward and a couple of centers. Now the centers are very interesting. 
because just because we desperately need centers. All right, so this guy expects starters minutes. He had a horrible ranking. Played 12 minutes a game at Texas A&M. I don't see it. And the problem with him especially is the big problem with him, he's not going to get starters minutes. Not a small forward. All right, so Snyder at Iowa. Good work ethic. Not too concerned. Also lower rated. And didn't get a ton of time. So it's really kind of hard to make a call on him. Oh, he's very it's very average, not a terrible pickup. Now with Kohler I don't get any of that information. So as uh, not interested in transfers as I am, I'll give Snyder a uh, little bit of contact and offer here. Let's see what happens. Because we are going to need a center, I think. Chris wants us to sort and check per minute. So I'm sure that you're going to get better players this way. Like, we don't want a small forward. We don't really need a shooting guard. So, yeah, you can, you can find some killer players like this. But the thing is, let's take a look here at... Um, take a look at the roster that we have coming back. So, Patrick Hurd coming in as a one-star with three-and-a-half star potential. This is a guy we knew that he was going to need some developing when we got here. That's not a surprise. We're hoping that we can recruit something to replace uh, Magnum, like now. Like, we either need a either a star freshman or uh, some kind of Juco or transfer. So, a point guard wouldn't be bad to look at. Brian Davis, we have no, no reason to bring in anything at the two-guard. We're fine there. We've got three guards we can roll with this year. That's fine. Taking a look at the small forwards, Kellum, obviously awesome. Antonio Washington, I mean, coming in with a seven, as a freshman, seven scoring, five defensive abilities, a good outside shooter, good rebounder, good really across the board. Heck of a pickup right there. Juan Davis, expecting a lot out of him, coming in with only two stars, four star potential, ton of athleticism. Uh, he, he's good enough at some of these categories to eat up minutes that's for sure Benton another freshman coming in needs to develop a uh, star and a half four star potential we need to see a good guy oh so there's a problem you get a good guy but he expects starters minutes so it's going to be tough there Davis wants solid minutes okay Awash doesn't care Kellum wants solid minutes so Frank Wilcox, you can see there he had the red shirt year, and you just get a little bit better of assessment on him. You know, he, we knew he was not a four-star player. He can't score. He can't play defense. Um, he's, I mean, he, he's a freshman. He can always develop, but hmm. Magnum Davis, Kellum Washington are all extremely solid. We know what we got in Wendland. Thankfully, he did not transfer out. Um, Washington. Washington is a 6 7 small forward who can rebound and play defense. So, what we'll probably end up doing this year, we'll prob 
probably... And, and Kellum's much the same way. He's only 6'6", 226. We'll probably go Magnum, Davis, uh, Kellum, Washington, Winland. Let Lon Davis, maybe even Brian Benton, play a little back up on the inside. Uh, we can get Batty Ace and playing time out here. Wilcox and Hurd take it. Uh, I think we've got a nice balanced team this year. What the goal needs to be this year is to turn all these red and yellow frowny faces into green faces. Like not have people hating each other. If we can play halfway decently like that, we'll be good to go. All right, so going back to stats. Uh, what I'm actually, if we could bring in anything I'd like for it to be a point guard. So take a look here and see if anything stands out like this. Both of these guys actually. Really bad. <laughs> Both really low rated. Uh, good good numbers for the compared to their minutes guy transferring out of Arizona decent decent rating so he played 25 minutes a game basically 10 points three and a half assists Really wish we could get some of this information, or or just at least the the personality. You know, it's got to probably be bad if he's a transfer. I think Corey Bruce might be worth a maybe a shot. I don't know, man. I just don't trust this. Scroll right to three point percentage. Thirty four. Well, that's that's kind of middling to me. But I mean he's a point guard. I don't know that three point percentage is necessarily what I'm looking for. Turnovers per game. He was pretty good on turnovers per game. I don't trust this. I only got two scholarships available. Let's see. Go back to the dashboard real quick. So, Winland's a junior. Benton's a freshman. So, we're all right there. One freshman power forward. We really need another power forward. Small forward, we're perfectly fine. We need a guard. Preferably a really we need a really good point guard. We need a a body at power forward and we need a center. So can we pull any of that out of the transfer portal? We still got this one right here. Yeah, let's let's advance see if we can get Snyder. There he is. So perfectly acceptable here. Transferred in, current two-star, four-star potential. Uh, decent rebounder, decent defender. All of this needs to improve, but he's a sophomore. We can redshirt him here. Oh, we cannot redshirt him. Has he already? Oh, he's already redshirted, actually. All right. Well, I mean, still, he'll be eligible as a junior next year, which is good to go. So we'll have senior, junior, sophomore next year. 
And then if he pans out, we can always red shirt Benton at that point, if we need to. So scoring wise, I mean, we still are good. We still got scores on this team, guys. We got a lot of scores on the team. Defensively, Magnum solid. Davis good enough. Kellum good enough. Same with Washington. Same with Davis. Wendland's a really good defender, actually. So I still feel like we're moving in the right direction. Got some defensive rebounders. I still think this is a solid team. I think the only thing that took us off track last year was the god-awful personalities. I mean, look at the potential of the guys that we have. So and you can you can figure this out. You look at who's freshmen, who's sophomores, and, and figure out what level of development that they're at. But this is all talent. It's just talent continually coming in. And it, other than the personalities, we would have been fine last year. All right, so let's pop out. Skip through the rest. Uh, we got Joe Snyder. Yep. Skip through the rest of these transfer sessions because we don't need it. We're good. Uh, our unexpected transfer was a power forward. It was... Uh, shoot. I, might, I haven't deleted the email yet, so I can go back and show you. Uh, Brennan Marsh, I think, was his name. And, I mean, he was playing a backup role for us last year. He was the one that was playing, uh, let's see, him and King were the two freshman power forwards. They both transferred out. And one of them was playing small forward and power forward. The other were playing power forward and center. Uh, but, you know, King was a disruptive force as far as a personality type goes. And so we didn't need that around whatsoever. So I don't miss that at all. Uh, Marsh, I would have preferred to keep around. But... Now, look at this. Here's what I'm talking about. You know, okay, Patrick Hurd is still star and a half, four stars. That's fine. But he gets in. You see him practice. The coaches take another look, and they say, you know what? Maybe Lon Davis is better than we thought. And so this guy that we brought in as a freshman who we're really hoping to, to count on, they they start off thinking he was a one- or two-star guy, and they say, oh, you know what? After we, After watching him for a month, yeah, he's a three-star guy with four-and-a-half-star potential. So Lon Davis, superstar that we brought in, and, and we knew that was the case. Um, the scouting is just not always accurate. So we definitely need to keep him happy, but uh, he can do everything that we need him to do as a freshman, and hopefully he continues to develop over time. All right, Mangum, he added the playmaker attribute. Good to see. So my boy... Uh, We've always mispronounced his last name as Magnum, and we'll continue to do so. My boy Magnum should be an absolute genie at the point guard spot this year. See, I'm just waiting for Brian Davis to develop the bucket getter. Because, I mean, he's a score from way back. You already know that. He's a junior, though, so he's running out of time. Wilcox doesn't have any attributes, nor does Kellum. Ray Battier doesn't have anything. So we still need him to develop a little bit more. Hopefully he'll be better next year. A wash, nothing yet. Lots of good attributes though. Good outside shooter, good passer from the small forward position, good rebounder, very athletic. Love to see it all across the board. Uh, we're not worried about these walk-ons. Brian Benton. Still all right, so looking really, really bad there, actually scoring them defensively. Um but we knew he was one of the guys that was decent at camp. He wasn't a top 25 or a top 10 or anything like that. So this is the guy we brought in. We knew he was going to need to develop. Wendland, we still got him for this year and next at center, ideally. Uh, Snyder, the transfer, is probably going to be ahead of Benton on the depth chart. Uh, but, you know, I, I think we're set for another run here. If we can keep the personalities on track, I certainly think that that we can outperform what we did last year. Going to Indy and Houston, there's no other way around it. Both my small forwards want starter minutes. Let me go check that. Yeah, Snyder can't play this year, obviously. Um, I was just saying, I think that he'll be ahead of the freshman by next year. 
uh, this year, I mean, it, it's either going to be Benton or it's going to be Leonard, the walk-on, which will be unfortunate. All right, so Kellum wants solid minutes, not starter minutes. Solid minutes is usually, uh, I don't know exactly how many, but uh, Washington's not concerned. So is it, is it Battier? He's not concerned. Those are our only three small forwards. So none of those guys want starter minutes. Was it a different position? Was it power forward, maybe? Solid minutes. We can just go go through here. Benton wants starter minutes. So he's going to be sadly disappointed, which uh, makes the transfer you know, that much better because this might be Benton's only year here. He's not going to get starter minutes. He's very much not going to get starter minutes. So he might get pissed off and transfer out. Heard wants solid minutes. Hopefully we can get that for him. We'll see. Yeah, Benton's the only one that wants starter minutes on the team. All right, folks. So there it is. Get rid of all these transferring. Blah, blah, blah. Let's check out the pro draft, see what happened. See if, uh, surely to goodness, Mike O's got drafted, right? Pete White from Arkansas. I mean, look at the top 10 SEC all over the place. And then the ACC right behind them. There's San Diego State. There you go, Chris. Getting guys pro. Not even in this save, and you're still pumping out the pro prospects. Oh, none of... Oh, yeah, yeah, there he is. Mike O's. Our boy got drafted. Tail end of the second round. Is that our first... That might be our first draftee. I think that might be our first draftee in this save. Oh, no, no, no. Actually, it's not. We've had three players drafted. I'm sure it was um, computer recruited players that got drafted but you know I can't yeah I understand that Snyder can't play this year he's a transfer he has to sit out the entire year I was hoping to be able to redshirt him so that he would still show up as a sophomore without having the redshirt available Chris says he'll still show up as a sophomore I don't know if that's the case or not we will find out obviously not in the next stream but in the one after that uh, but we've been up for two and a half hours tonight. That's all that I got. I'm going to go crash. Let's see real quick. What kind of interested players do we have? In Great Plains region still. And again, we just we still don't have the budget to recruit internationally with any consistency. All right, so only two five-star players in the region this year. Uh, but we've got quite a bit of interest once you get outside of the top 50. So, I mean, it, it definitely has... Uh, I definitely got high hopes for another big, big-time recruiting class. And we keep bringing them in. You guys might not think these are big-time recruiting classes, but look at this potential. Like, once we get these guys to play nice with each other, which was the only problem. Like two years ago, we went, what, 22 and 23 and 7 or something like that. Got a number one seed. Last year, these guys just couldn't get along. The bad apples and the, the personality clashes are gone. That is in our rearview mirror. It's in the past. And look what we're still working with. Still no star players. So that's why we're not moving up into that elite echelon. And we 100% have to get a player at point guard this year. No other way around it. But Brian Davis, Wilcox, they're both good. And they'll both be here next year, in theory. Kellum and Washington, same thing. Davis, same thing. Wendland, same thing. Maybe even Leonard. So, I mean, we're, we're a point guard away from taking what we've got here and just rolling it over with younger guys and keep on moving. So... What's my, scre my streaming schedule? I stream whenever my children aren't throwing absolute hissy fits upstairs and uh, causing pure chaos. Uh, I find a lot of times that ends up being like on a Wednesday night. Um, streaming tonight because I just got back from a week-long vacation. 
so I hadn't streamed in a while and I was missing the save and wanted to get back to it so I jumped up on it uh, all that to say my streaming schedule is whenever I'm available <laughs> and it just like either follow on on Twitch or on YouTube or uh, follow GM Games Twitter account Chris always gets the the tweets out when I go live but a lot of times I can't stick to a great schedule just because of family life so I don't really know that I'm going live until about 30 minutes before it happens uh, so I apologize that it's not more consistent than that but that's kind of how I roll um, but all that being said, guys, I had an absolute blast tonight. It was a roller coaster for sure. It didn't end up where I thought that it should and would end up. Uh, but we're still alive and kicking. We took some body blows. They can keep on swinging all they want. We're getting back up. These Missouri Tigers are climbing to the top of this SEC uh, conference one way or another. Uh, and I I'm absolutely pumped. Actually, one last thing I want to see before we, before we sign off. What do these point guard recruits look like? Tell me we got some more depth this year. Okay. One of our five-star players is a point guard. A handful of four-star guys. Hopefully we can land one. And we got a couple of three-star guys, so you never know. We could grab a camp performer, the 2.1. He has interest before I've started recruiting him, so no fears there about a non-qualifier. Uh, so we're looking good. Make sure I save. Don't do anything dumb. Uh, guys, thank you so much for attending. Hope you enjoyed it. I had a blast, and... Uh, I will catch you all next time. I hope to make it as soon as possible because, like I said, once a week minimum if I can help it at all, and hopefully more than that. But that's all I got for tonight. Uh, appreciate you all, and I'll see you next time.